have somebody to be mad at. That's right. We like to have somebody to hold accountable. And I'm coming to tell you tonight that the only person in the world that you can truly hold accountable is the one that you shave his face in the morning. Amen. Or her face, whatever the case may be. <laughs> Okay, that's the only, the, at the end of the day, I can, I can do my best on my kids, I, I can do my best and lead my wife, I can do my best as the pastor of the church, but at the end of the day, the only one that I can truly hold accountable is the one that I cover up myself at night and go to bed. And I've got to, I've got to do this, Brother David, I, I've got to do this, I, I've got to see what can I do to make a difference. What I'm about to cover with you. What I'm about to cover with you. I taught in another series at one point in time. Teaching on holiness. And much of this is gleaned from Brother Rodney Shaw. Who pastors in Austin, Texas. His teaching on holiness of the mind. Now listen to me. Here's the root of the problem. The carnal mind. Do you know what carnal means? Anybody not know what carnal means? Carnal is, is fleshly. What, what the flesh desires. It's the base desires of the flesh. The carnal mind leads away from God. Romans 8 and 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Now that word carnal means fleshly or pertaining to the body as the seat of desires or appetites. It's what this fleshly body wants to do. The word mind there is the Greek word phronema, P-H-R-O-N-E-M-A, and it is defined as the underlying attitude to life that determines behavior. It is the attitude that you and I have toward life that determines our behavior. Enmity. In one place it says hatred. In another place, it is defined rather not by what it is, but by what it is not. It is the opposite of agape, which is the highest love there is. It is the love that God has for us. So enmity is as far a polar opposite from what God is as you can get. So the carnal mind, the mind that is ruled by the desires of the flesh, takes us as far away from God as we can be. So if the carnal mind, the mind that is ruled by the fleshly desires, you know, sometimes I, I, just, I, I just get a little bit giddy uh, when I realize I'm maturing. Because there are things, Sister Maria, that I battled with, I battled with, I battled with, and then it's like I woke up one day and realized I ain't battled with that in like a long time. Because it don't even matter anymore. It's amazing what maturing can do for you. Okay, so if the carnal mind is not subject to God, to the law of God, what is it subject to? And it cannot be subject to the law of God, which means it's, it's why there's so many of us that I can relate to are so miserable in living for God. It's like there's no victory. It's because we're trying to get the victory and we're trying to do right with a carnally controlled mindset. I want to be pleasing to God. I want to do the things of God. I want to show up to church. I want to be involved and I want to be used, but I want to do it my way. And it can't happen. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That's why I said what I did to preface this message. is, is we, We're not just going to start going to church. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been told that. Going to start going to church. I was told that today. This church. Going to start going to church. We've got to change that paradigm. And we, we're going to start going into the world as we've been empowered by the church. As what I get when I come in here is going to make me feel like I can charge hell with the proverbial bucket of water. 
I, I put on the whole armor of God. I get myself all fired up and, and full of them and vigor, so to speak. And I feel like I'm going to go win some souls and I'm going to go make a difference in this world. You say, well, I don't know about making this. Let me tell you something. That Bible is full. I, I find a story where a little 16-year-old boy goes out. And the whole army of Israel is scared out of their minds. And he wades out there with five stones and a sling. He takes that giant out. And you read the very next verse. The Bible says the whole army of Israel rose up and pursued the Philistines. You just think about for just a minute the impacts in this world we live in from a secular viewpoint that were done by one person. I'll read you a story sometime. I think you maybe read it to us the other night or somebody read it to us about a school teacher at Gettysburg. Have you ever read about that? That the reason why we wanted Gettysburg is that there was a school teacher that had a whole platoon of men that were out of ammunition. He said, fix your bayonets. And they charged the, the Confederacy. They charged them. And they went and actually the Confederate general surrendered a loaded weapon to that school teacher whose gun was empty. You read in his name was Chamberlain. You read that he's given all the credit for a whole battle being won. Now, it's immaterial of your feelings about that. The point is, is one person can make a difference. That's right. You can make a difference. If there'll be one of you that will buy into what I'm trying to deliver tonight, what I'm trying to preach tonight, you'll come to church and everybody will think you've lost your mind. Uh-huh. It's what the book says, brother. These next scriptures are going to give us the link. This is going to be the solution between the mind being off and by virtue of that, by virtue of our mind being ruled by our carnal thinking, we'll be, be led to a place that we never thought possible. And where we will find, now I want you to listen to me, I'm going to the root. When we are ruled by our carnal desires, we will eventually find ourselves in a place where it is impossible to think or live godly anymore. Romans 1 and 20. Bear with me just a few minutes. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. They, without excuse, refers to those who are now unbelievers. But when he says from creation, they were clearly seen, denotes where you think it was, Brother David. When Adam and Eve walked out of the garden, there was not a doubt in their mind that the road they walked on, that the gate that they walked through, that the beautiful trees that they just left were created by the mouthpiece of God, by the voice of God. Not a doubt in their mind. And they told it to their children. But somewhere along the way, they got away from the very fact that God made the entire world. And they began to walk off track. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, now let me tell you something. I don't care what, I don't care what the news media wants to tell you. I don't care what some crazy talk show host might tell you. When we were formed as a country, it was formed by a bunch of Bible-believing, Bible-reading men and women. There's too much evidence to back that up. Their speeches are full of scriptures. They can tell you what they want to. But the church was the hub of the United States of America. Every community rotated around the church. There's very strong evidence, just a little bit of a, there's very strong evidence that William Penn, who's the founder of Pennsylvania, was a tongue-talking, Holy Ghost-filled believer that baptized in Jesus' name. Remember the Quakers? You know why they called them Quakers? Because they quaked. 
Under the influence of the Holy Ghost. Paul told, uh, I believe it was Agrippa or Felix one, this thing wasn't done in a corner. Amen. You're not alone. We didn't create this. This has been going since the day of Pentecost. Amen. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. So the danger of knowing God, of experiencing God, of, of acknowledging God, and then failing to acknowledge Him, walking away from Him, leads to an empty, self-serving mindset, which leads to a darkened heart, which would be symbolic for what's in the dark. You don't know what's in the dark. How do you think the boogeyman ever got born? Because some little kid imagined he was under his bed. But the boogeyman ain't never come around in the light. Huh? Verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Greater, listen to me, greater wisdom, progressive thinking from a worldly viewpoint leads to foolishness in the eyes of God. You will never get more godly by becoming more worldly or by becoming more relevant in the world you live. Verse 23. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. First place was at Sinai. When they needed, just like I said, we need somebody to be mad at. They needed somebody to worship. They needed a figure to worship. So they began to make things to worship. And, and, and the, 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 the horrible uh, error in doing that is never displayed so great as when the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant into Dagon, who was their God, and the first morning his head fell off. They put it back on there. The second morning they came in, the whole, the whole image had fell off in the floor. His arm, he was cut all to pieces. Okay? It's just a stick of wood. They created gods out of things that God himself had created. Such as animals and fish and birds and, and even the image of a man himself. So verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up. Everybody say gave them up. Yes. To uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Gave them up or gave them over is a recurring theme through this passage of scripture. In one particular commentary, it basically says that God threw his hands up. And said, have at it. You want to be free? You want to do your own thing? You want to make something else to be a God that's not a God? You want to, you want to build some kind of a donkey or, or some kind of a, a pot or, or some kind of a, of a half-naked woman that's got the, the body of an antelope and the horns of a, a billy goat or some kind of crazy thing? Then you just go right ahead. That's what the book says here. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So it's not a new truth. Does it not amaze you all how plain the scriptures are? It's not a new truth. It's not a new revelation. It's not a you need to get with the times. All right. The book does say, let God be true and every man a liar. Can I get a witness? Amen. And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. What's the creature? Anything God created. 
which in this line of thinking, the creature that people are worshiping is which one? Themselves. The one they look at in the mirror. Okay? Because the flesh will rule and we will do things totally contrary to what God made us to do. Just in order to satisfy some kind of a little feeling. Not another truth, but a lie. Who changed the truth of God, the way of God, the plan of God into a lie. They made it something different. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet or was necessary. Vile would be dishonorable, dishonorable affections, dishonoring themselves, a total lack of self-respect. I heard a story once of a little 14-year-old girl. We may not want to put this one on the internet, brother. 14-year-old girl. That she was bragging and she was happy. 14 years old. Bragging and happy that she was with two guys in one night. And I saw her walk up. And when she walked up, brother David, my heart broke. Because I thought, oh man, she's a baby. She is a baby. And she's, somebody has convinced her that that's cool. That that's what you got to do to be accepted. God have mercy, saints of God. Can you not see the need for us to do 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 if my people? What is considered normal? What is considered accepted? When children do things that are wrong and break the law and it somehow is the school's fault or somehow it's some other adult's fault, God have mercy on us. I promise you. And I, I'm not going to beat this dead horse because mama gets upset when I talk about getting whoopings and stuff. But I was always guilty till proven innocent. Always. And I've raised my kids the same way because they're capable of it. That's right. They are not angels. They didn't come flapping their wings down from heaven. They are ornery and they don't mind. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Listen to verse 28. Even as God, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Do you know what a reprobate mind is? It's when you're no longer able to tell right from wrong. Now, is there a little irony in here? What was the first sin? What was the very first sin? What'd they do? They ate fruit from a forbidden tree which was the knowledge of good and evil. So what happens is when they don't want to keep the, the mind of God, the fear of God, the plan of God, is instead of elevating themselves, they take themselves back to the very basic animalistic way you could be. No longer knowing right from wrong. But instead governed by the lust of the flesh. The desires of the flesh. No longer able to determine the difference between right and wrong. It's not, it's not hard to see. It's not hard to see. Where was it, Denmark or Austria? That decided that pedophilia was okay? 
Listen to me just a minute. Do you know that many of these diseases are incubated and are born between sexual relations between people and animals? You think we don't live in a world? This is what happens when you tell God you don't need him. When you tell God to get out, same way, same way. Marcus and Kim, if y'all go home tonight and you tell the kids, listen, mom and daddy's going to Sykes and get a hotel room, y'all have at it. What's going to happen? They, are they going to vacuum and dust and do the laundry and, and cook for one another? What's going to happen? It's going to be chaos. Listen to me. It's, it's going to be chaos. You'll be lucky if the house is standing when you get back. Oh, for, that's exactly what happens. That's exactly what happens to a life without God. Is you will go hog wild and pig crazy. Do everything, everything. I, I, can't, I, I, tell, I can't tell you the pastors. I can't tell you the pastors, Brother David, that I've heard. They started saying, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's out of date. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. That came back and said, I wish I'd never done it. I never thought I'd go this far. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. How many of you have ever have heard something in the news and think, my God, have mercy. Who, what kind of warped mind thinks up something like that? Oh, now crazy things without understanding oh wait 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 back me up one backbiters haters of God despiteful proud boasters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents and let me tell you something I, I'm fixing to go there I remember being at the boys' ranch and I took a phone call from a lady that asked me would I take her son. He's out of control. He won't mind. He won't do nothing I said. He goes and gets on his bicycle. Down. I said, well, okay, ma'am, how old is he? Five. <laughs> is that not true? He's five. I didn't need a ranch for a troubled boy. I needed a ranch for a troubled mammy. <laughs> Because five years old ain't the problem. <laughs> I went there. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> well, Pete, there's still things I'm learning. There's still things I'm learning. Without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection. Implacable, meaning nothing satisfies them. And unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God. Who knowing. How many of you have read your bread? And look, listen to me. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, brother Greg. The Lord said, if you eat of that tree, you will die. And the devil said, he lied to you. And she took the word, if you'll allow me to use it this way, of a casual acquaintance, of a freak, a talking snake, so to speak, over the word of Almighty God, and she thought it was the right thing to do. And now look where we are. Huh? She knew the whole time 
Think about it. What the, what the Lord, how many times did the Lord tell the children of Israel? He tell, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, you can read the whole thing when you go home. But he told Solomon, as long as you walk like your daddy David walked, I, my name's going to be here. But when you walk away, I will too. I, I walk away too. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do them, but have pleasure in them that do them.